Hey, I was just looking at some bacteria. Always fun. In fact, you can look at it with me. Look at that. Ooh, not so good. You know, bacteria are just like uh, other living organisms that, that have certain interesting features. In particular, they tend to multiply. And you know, one of the most uh, important and accurate models for generating population growth actually comes from a basic assumption. And the basic assumption is kind of kind of natural, which is if your population is larger, then in fact the rate of increase or the amount of babies produced should be larger. If your population is small, then there's in some sense less procreating, and so we'd expect that the population growth to be smaller. Well, actually, when you model that mathematically, it becomes an exponential model. And in fact, there's, there's two models that we can look at. There's exponential growth, like uh, populations growing, or uh, you know, if you're considering um, uh, um, bacteria growing. But there's also decay if you have like a radioactive substance. Radioactive substances slowly go away and dissipate, but actually they usually have half-lives. And so in fact, as they decay, they decay proportionally to how much is there. The rate of decay is proportional to how much is there. So that's just a fancy way of saying that exponential functions are abound. Let's take a look at exponential growth. The model for exponential growth is y equals a e to the b x, where a and b are constants that we have to somehow figure out, and the x represents the time, and the y represents the amount of population or the amount of whatever. And exponential decay, happily, is extremely similar. If you look really, really closely, what you'll see, the only difference is that there's a negative sign here, and that's to allow this thing to shrink, to get smaller. If you remember the graphs of the exponential function when you have e to the minus x, you remember that they actually kind of shrink. And so what you see here is this is a shrinking process. And again, the mysterious quantities a and b are determined by the given parameters of the particular question. In fact, let's take a look at one right now. This one is a bacteria type question. So a student measured the number of bacteria in a culture twice, so at two different times, and found that the number increased from 100 bacteria after three hours to 400 uh, bacteria count after five hours. Now let's uh, assume that the growth follows the uh, exponential growth model, which is a reasonable assumption, by the way. Uh, our job is to predict the number of bacteria in the culture after six hours. And then using this model, see if we can find the time uh, when, in fact, we will have a population uh, of 10,000 bacteria. That's a lot of bacteria. Probably have to build some condos for them. All right, so first of all, this is a growth model, so we're actually going to use the exponential uh, growth. And, and here's what we're given. We're given that uh, at three hours, we have a population of 100, and at five hours, we have a population of 400. Remember, the X represents time, and the Y represents population here. And our job is to use this model, which I'll just abbreviate like this, to, uh, to answer some interesting questions about, about the population. Well, okay, where do you start? Well, the mystery, of course, is the A and the B. But here's the cool thing. We have two unknowns, and check it out. We have two facts. Namely, at three hours we had 100, and at five hours we had 400. Those two facts will allow us to figure out the two unknowns. So that's our first mission. The first mission is just to describe the, the parameters required. So let's think about this together and see if we can figure this out. So what we know is that if I plug in x equals 3 and y equals 100, this equation, this model is satisfied. That means that I know that 100 equals a, an unknown fixed quantity, e, the special number e, 2.71, to the b times 100 power. Well, if you notice, I can take this thing and I can actually solve it for A. And so what I see here is that A is equal to 100 divided by E to the 100. Oh, I'm sorry. There's a typo here. Do you see the typo? Uh, th this is not 100. I'm so sorry. Will you forgive me? I made a mistake. You know what? I'll just turn this over. You know... You're going to make mistakes all the time. It's a natural, important part of actually learning math. But the important thing is to think through what you're doing and immediately catch the mistake. In this case, remember, x is 3. So let's try it again. So I see 100 equals a, the unknown quantity, e, 2.71, da, 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 b, times now 3. 
Yeah, see, that was my mistake. So now if I solve this for, for A, I see that A equals 100 divided by E to the 3B. Now, that's just a little fact that will be useful to us in a moment, but right now that's all we know. But we also know that at time 5, we have a population of 400. So let's try to run that game and see what happens here. So that means that when x equals 5, y equals 400. So I have 400 equals a, I don't know what that is, e, that's 2.7, b times 5. And if I now solve this uh, for, a, for, um, for nothing, I just look at this and see something. Hey, there's an a and a b. And I can actually replace the a by its twin, which is this. And this is just in terms of b. And if I do that, I'll have equa an equation just in terms of b. So let's try that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to insert this value and replace it by this. And that's going to remove uh, one of the unknowns. It'll get rid of a. So I'll see 400 equals, and now instead of a, I'm putting in this. That's 100 divided by e to the 3b. And then on the top, I have, that's still e to the 5b. So look, I got rid of the a. And now I can actually simplify this. Notice that if I divide both sides by 100, all those zeros go away. That's kind of cool. So I see 4 equals. And then I have e to the 5b divided by e to the 3b. The same uh, base, which means what do I do with the exponents if I'm dividing these quantities? I subtract. So what's 5b minus 3b? If I have 5b's and you take away 3b's, I'm left with 2b's. Or not 2b's. <laughs> little Shakespeare joke. Stop it. Okay, so it's 2b. So all of this work allows me to conclude <clears throat> that 4 equals e to the 2b. And now notice the unknown is in the exponent. It's up there in the, in the rafters. I want to get it down. So taking a natural log is a great way to actually allow me to simplify this. So I'm going to take the natural log of both sides, and let's see what we get. <clears throat> if I take the natural log <clears throat> of both sides, what do I see? Well, on the left-hand side, I just see the natural log of 4. Can't do much with that. But here, this exponent, by the rules of logarithms, can come out in front and become a coefficient, which is exactly what we want. And so I'm going to have this equals 2b natural log of e. But natural log of e, remember natural log is just log base e. So this is just log base e of e, which turns out to be 1. e to the 1 equals e. And so that just goes away, and I'm left with uh, natural log of 4 equals 2b, and I can solve for b by dividing both sides by, by 2 and, and seeing that b equals a half natural log of 4. And actually, I can simplify this a little bit because I'm going to use that same property we just used in reverse. I'm going to take this exponent and bring it up, I bring this coefficient up and bring it, make it an exponent. Check it out. This now equals ln of 4 to the 1 half power which means ln of the square root of 4, which we know is 2. So we see b is natural log of 2. All that work gave us what b equals, the natural log of 2. Phew! Let me box that in before we lose it. It was just solving an exponential equation, really. But now, armed with that, I can figure out what a is, because there's the formula for a. So a must equal... 100 divided by e to the 3 natural log of 2, because that's the b. So now I've got to simplify that. So what does that look like? Well, let me take a new sheet of paper here so we don't get too crazy. So to simplify that, let's just look on the bottom there for a second. I can write that as, well, Maybe I'll just keep it like that, really. I don't know if I should keep it. Do you think I should keep it like that? No, I'm going to simplify a little more. Because, look, uh, that 3 can be brought up as an exponent, and so I can write this as e to the natural log of 2 cubed. 
And one of the properties we learned is that e raised to the power of natural log of something is just the something. So this is actually equal to 100 divided by the something, which is 2 cubed. And 2 cubed is 8. Wow, this is working out really nicely. So 100 over 8, which is just 12.5. So all that work allowed us to figure out that A equals 12.5. We already figured out B. That equals the natural log of 2. And so after all this work, we can put these pieces of the puzzle together and see that the function is y equals a, that's 12.5, e to the b, and what's b? That's natural log of 2 times x. So that's natural log of 2 all times x. And now all of this crazy computation that we did, we can throw all that away. That's not even needed anymore. Because now... These two pieces of information allowed us to conclude this. And I want to make one comment about this before I answer these other questions, just for fun, which is to show you that we could actually, if we wanted to, simplify this a teeny bit more. And so this is more of a practice of, of the, the exponential stuff, because this x is multiplying a log, which means I could bring it up as an exponent. And so I could write this as y equals 12.5 e... I'll write it with the x in front so you can really see it. Natural log of 2. See how it's a coefficient? That means I can bring it up to the exponent on the 2, which means that y equals 12.5e to the natural log of 2 to the x power. Now, why would I do that? That seems awful, except now remember the fact that if you have an e to a natural log power, they cancel each other out, and you're just left with that. So I could write this whole thing, if I wanted to, as this. Now, this seems a lot cleaner because there's no e and there's no natural log anymore. The problem is that actually in a lot of comp computations, and especially in a lot of scientific calculators, they don't have an e to the, uh, they don't have a 2 to the x button. Instead, they have a, an, an e. So actually, this is not a bad way of writing it. But I want to point out that you can actually simplify it even more if you want. And we might even use both of these today. We'll see. Anyway, we finally found the answer, which is that just knowing this model and knowing this information, we now have a model for this particular situation. So we can throw all of this away. Phew! And now we can come back and ask uh, what are the answers to the questions. So the first question is, uh, use this to predict uh, how many bacteria in the culture there'll be after six hours. Okay, so that's time equals six. So if time equals six, what do we do? We let x equal 6. So let x equal 6. And what do I see? I see that the answer is y equals 12.5e to the ln2 uh, times 6. And you can actually figure out what that is with a calculator, or this is an example where it might be better just to use this. Because if I use this method, I see y equals 12.5, 2 to the 6. Then 2 to the 6, we can actually compute. Because 2 to the 6 actually is 64. And so what I see is this is 12.5 times 64, and that equals 800. So we see that there are 800 uh, bacteria uh, in the culture after six hours. So the answer is 800. See how fast we were able to do it once we got all... The hard part was getting the A and the B. Once you're given the A and the B, everything else goes real smoothly. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so there's that. And then there was the second part. How long will we have to wait in order to have a population of 10,000? Well, that's asking how long. We're asking for time. Time is X, so we have to solve for X. The population is 10,000. Population is represented by Y. So in our model, and I'm going to use the the real fancy version here, we know that y is 10,000 and we now want to solve for x. So that's what we want to do. In fact, you know what? This is going to actually deserve a larger sheet of paper because there's going to be lots of excitement going on here. So let's actually start with a larger piece of paper. And so uh, what do we have here? Well, I have 10,000 equals 12.5 e to the natural log of 2 times x. And now I want to solve this. So, so what should I do here? Well, I should divide both sides by 12.5. And if you divide both sides by 12.5, this, this becomes 800. So I have 800 here equals e to the 
natural log of 2 times x. And now to solve this, what I want to do is I want to take the natural log of both sides. Because the unknown x is up in the rafters, I want to bring it down. From an exponent to a coefficient, the log does that. So in this case, I take the natural log of both sides. So I can barely fit it in here. Natural log of this side, natural log of this side. And let's see what I get. On the left, I just get some number, which we have to compute later, natural log of 800, whatever that is, equals, and now that exponent comes out in front. And so I see natural log of 2 times x, and then I have natural log of just e alone. Well, natural log of e is just 1, so that's just 1. And all I have is this coefficient of natural log of 2 in front of the x. And so if I divide both sides by natural log of 2, I see that natural log 800 divided by natural log of 2 equals x. And that's actually a number we can compute on a scientific calculator if you wanted to. Beep, 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 beep. And this turns out to be approximately 9.643, and it goes on. And if we round it to the nearest hour, that would be about 10 hours. So we'd have to wait about 10 hours for this exponential model, given the initial data that we had, to actually uh, produce a population of 10,000. So the exponential function is a wonderful way to model real-life populations of anything, whether it's populations of bacteria, populations of human beings, or even population of money. If you put money in a bank and it grows and there's an interest rate, in fact, there's compounding going on, it's all the same principle. So whether it's money or whether it's lives, it turns out the exponential function is there to save the day. I'll see you soon.